Well, it's a really miserable day today. I was going to get on the rain on with the rain drop because Bill sent me the air conditioning and some other bits that we needed. Um, but it's raining, so I'm not going to bother with that today. I'll leave it for another day or another month. Yeah. Um, I've got some parts the other week for this engine block, but I never really got round to fitting them. This is the block with the cast uh, with the steel crank, not the cast iron crank. So it's kind of a special one. It's a Maxion. Uh, 300 TDI made in Argentina <clears throat> but um, today I'm sort of calculating what the head gasket thickness is and I, I know we've done this before but there are several ways to do it now I, I think I've come up with an even better way now but anyway uh, let's let's show you how we do it in a nutshell before we get, we get too confused because I, I have I've had to do this two or three times so what this state in the book to measure it is this. You measure along the axis of the piston like that you see where the piston pin is so like in line with the crank and you measure two, measure both sides and take the height of the highest one and mark it on the piston crown. Now this is all well and good it works very well but the problem is um, mag mounts aren't the best well there's all different types but you can see here, this mag mount has only got very small contact areas and it is quite possible with this when you're putting it onto your piston to get the, the height wait a minute, let's, get, let's try and take an example you can, you can actually drop it into the block a little bit and it doesn't stay, so you're forever messing about with different lengths trying to find the optimal place, you can go off this side but it's bit awkward when you start moving things around. It does work and it's, if you've got patience it does work but like I said just beware that you can have a little bit of rock sometimes on those because of the contact area. So what's a, another way we can do it? Well we can do it with uh, a straight edge, a nice known straight edge and some feeler gauges and go under, each, under the straight edge on each, each piston and don't be afraid of writing the heights on the piston. Uh, this one's 60, this, uh, this is 63, point, point 0.63, point 0.6. And what we're trying to determine is which is the highest point of the pistons. Because the gaskets are shimmed, as you probably know. And so that's a good way of doing it, but my feeler gauges are absolutely finished, so um, I can't read them anymore. So, a few weeks back, I got one of these depth gauges for checking out the heights of valves and I, it, it, just, it screws onto your uh, gauge here, everybody's got these now, they're cheap as chips now this was about $20 and what I did was <laughs> I attacked it with a grinder because there wasn't the, the, the contact area wouldn't straddle the piston if you see what I mean it, when you put it on you couldn't get a, a good width and, and measure the crown or wherever you wanted to measure so you can see what I did, I ground it down so there's just contact areas on here and it works remarkably well because it's easy to read and um, you just have to slide this piece up and down and of course you can set the tension on this with your little thumb screw there so it's not moving around all the time but it does work very very well so I've averaged out this, this piston here, this uh, block and the highest piston is 0.63 which is a bit of a shame really because <laughs> it's just off the uh, so 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 is a one hole gasket I've been wanting to use that gasket up for ages um, so because it's 0 0.63 we're going to go for a two hole gasket which is 0 0.61 to 0 0.7 a little bit of a margin of safety there but better safe than sorry as the bishop said to the actress now <clears throat> What I'm getting on about this video is, if you cast your mind back, um, when we did a little video on the Azerbaijan uh, 110 with a 300 TDI, I had sort of a little tappity knock at the back, and also it had broken push, uh, rockers and things like this, which is not a really good sign. And when we looked at one of the pistons, the, one of the valves had been hitting the top of the crown of the piston just ever so slightly. And the owner told me that um, 
the the block had been machined twice like faced twice this is not good because we might have a situation where the piston is still hitting a valve even though it's got the thickest gasket in now there's no way for us to go now but we might be able to find a little cheapy fix and I'm not sure I've never done this before but it could work it means not putting two gaskets on but taking a gasket apart because they're only held on with rivets here and in the corners here taking a shim out see there's they're made of different thicknesses of shims, that's how they do it, it's, it's only cheap. <laughs> but the, the, the shims inside, you can, you can get one open. There you go, see? That's how it's made. Inside here, the shims are flat. But on the exterior, they're, they're pressed. So that when you compress the head, it makes a seal. So I'm thinking, I wonder if, it's, if it just needs that extra little bit of thickness could we take this apart, put a shim in it, and make it even thicker? I'll just insert this here because I finished the video and I've come back to it because I did something interesting, as I usually do. As I mentioned, this is made up of little shims inside. I thought I'd measure up the shims. Very interesting. So it is the shims that does the calculation of the thickness, but they are different. Now, obviously, uh, the, the Victor Reince is the two-hole one, uh, and this one's a Bermac one. And the Bermac ones were made in the United States for some bizarre reason. I didn't know they made them over here. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, so let's <laughs> put the board down here. So I just scribbled down on a piece of gasket box here. The, the one-hole gasket, one, the thick shim is 0.57, the thin shim is 0.1, uh, 0.15, giving a thickness of 72, 0.72. The uh, two hole is 0.73, a little bit different, uh, 0.11, and it comes out of 0.84. So there's a, there is, it, you know, that, so that's how they step up the thickness is. So maybe I might be onto something by putting a thicker, an even thicker gasket on. Would it, would it work? Comments below. Right, back to the video. It would make it a bugger of a job if anybody wants to repair it again because you couldn't buy one. But. Um, it would save that block, wouldn't it? It would save that block. Hmm. I don't know. I won't know on that Azerbaijan one until I actually take the head off and have a look and see what's wrong with it. I really don't know. But it really needs measuring properly. And, and one of the sort of things that was sounding alarm bells for me when we talked to the owner is, you see there's a... There's a chamfer on the edge of the cylinder here, and that's to allow the rings to go in easier. He said that that chamfer wasn't on his block. That means they've ploughed quite a bit off, um, which is not a good thing. Some people have suggested, oh, take the pistons out and uh, machine them down. It's a lot of work. And is it a good idea to machine pistons? Uh, I don't know. You're, you're not talking a great deal, but I don't know. When when engines are revving kind of high, uh, the pistons, the, the valves and the pistons come very, very, very close together. But like when you're turning it over, it wouldn't make any difference if you see you can turn it over and you wouldn't be able to feel anything. But once you get up to about 3,000 RPM, you'll find that there's a little bit of resonance and they actually can kiss a little bit. I found this out many, many years ago when I was funny about with the A-series engines. And I had a, an 1100 engine and I put a 1300 uh, head on it. Just get no more power, you know what you're doing, you're a lad. But, but the problem is I didn't realise that once you were flat out with it, the valves would bounce a little bit and break the rockers. It, it, it's ever so close. So ditch that and put the 1100 head back on. Uh, <coughs> it took a bit of finding out, but anyway, that was the cause of that. So could we, could we fix that very cheaply and then turn the fueling up? Because you see, the bottom end's been done on that truck, the crank's new crank, new cam, new everything. 
Um, there's not much more that's, you know, been replaced apart from the block. Apart from the block. I don't know. So me what I'm getting at now is measuring the piston protrusion is very important. Apparently they didn't do that. They didn't do that. You know. They must have thought it was some sort of like a, a, a petrol engine or something like that. Whereas there's a combustion chamber in the head. I don't know. But you see these, are, uh, these engines here are what's called an interference engine. That means if the cam belt snaps, um, the valves will technically bend. Well, they won't do in this one because the, the valves are perpendicular to the piston. But if you get a, uh, an engine that's got valves at 45 degrees, for example, well, it'll just bend all the valves. Rather like um, those KV6 engines. They were a disaster when the belt went. <laughs> Buggers all the valves up. Uh, how is it? 24 valves? I think we did one once and we had to replace 18 of them. Not a good job. Um, but they're an interference engine um, rather than a non-interference. A non-interference, if the cam belt snaps, pff, no big deal. Uh, some Toyotas were like that uh, in the 80s, which is good. If the belt snapped, pff, no big deal. But these will snap, if the belt snaps on this, generally speaking, the valves will be good. It'll either break a rocker or it'll break a push rod. Now, if I see a push rod bent, I, I replace them all anyway. But, you know, you've got to really check and look for little hairline cracks in the rockers. Usually the rockers just snap, you know, they just snap off. I shall show you one. Here's one that came in from the House of Horrors. You can see it just snapped off. They don't bend, they just snap. Um, fortunately, they're not too bad to replace. And, like I say, I just put a new set of rods in anyway. If, if one's gone, you, uh, one or two's gone, I'll just put a full set in and bugger it. They're only cheap. It eliminates that risk of something else being out. So anyway, that's that. So it is critical to get the, the height of the piston right. And uh, also we've got to torque the head down correctly. Uh, when they did that Azerbaijan one, the guy said they'd, they'd snap two head bolts, tighten it down. Not a good sign, is it? So I'm gonna do that uh, according to the book of here. I've got this little printout sheet that I have. This is for the HS 2.8 head top uh, uh, sequence. And I've got a little plan of here. I printed it out of the book with the numbers of the bolts corresponding to here. So I can go down this list, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right to 18. And it says tighten down to 60 Newton meters plus 150. Now that is quite kind of important. So what you do is you don't go around it and tighten down uh, to the, Newton meter figure and then tighten down to the 150 uh, degrees. For the simple reason that it will start to pull down and the, the figures will all, all be wrong. It's kind of difficult to explain really, but if you, if you tighten one bolt down to 60 Newton meters and then go on to the next one 60 Newton meters, when you come to, to, to do it down to 150, you'll find the corresponding bolt next to it might be a bit loose. So just do them as you're going along. Kind of, it's a kind of easy, it's a bit of a cheeky way. Cause, and, it, and it seems to work quite well, especially with the, the uh, metal gaskets. Yeah, so anyway. So I'm going to get on with that because I happen to have, as it happens, I have here a Victor Ranks two-hole gasket. Like I say, it's easy to put a three-hole gasket in, but it's in, it, it isn't right, is it? We like to do things right. Well, sort of. See you later.